Happy Wednesday, Razorback fans. You're three days away from Arkansas versus Liberty at Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. 3 p.m. kickoff is going to be on the SEC Network. And this game is shaping up to be a very, very interesting matchup between the Arkansas Razorbacks, Sam Pittman, and Hugh Freeze in the Liberty Flames. Uh, listen to Hugh Freeze on Monday if you want to go listen to that. We have the press conference on the Hogbeat YouTube, H-A-W-G-B-E-A-T.com. And you can also visit Hogbeat.com for everything Hugh Freeze said about Arkansas because, of course, his entire press conference was not just talking about Arkansas. So I took the time, as I do every week, to write out everything he said about Arkansas. So go check that out. I've got Robert Stewart with me. We're from Hogbeat. Uh, it's the Arkansas site or the rival site covering the Arkansas Razorbacks. And we got a lot to get to today. A lot of news. Um, a lot has happened since Monday's episode. More news than I expected to happen. And let's start with Dominic Johnson. He tore his ACL, the same ACL that he injured during the Outback Bowl against Penn State. Um, and then also Cade Renfro. Um, Sam Pittman hasn't addressed this yet, but Cade Renfro went to Instagram um, said base like he did a live. I wasn't on the live, but then he posted pre and post surgeries. And then I confirmed it with a representative from the U of A that K Renfro did in fact, tear his ACL, the same ACL that he told tore during bowl practice. So Robert, I mean, it's kind of concerning that you got two guys tearing the same ACL that they've already torn within a year of each other. I mean, that's, I feel like that's really not a good look for, for the Arkansas medical staff, but you know, I'm not a doctor, so take my opinion for what you will. Um, but yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Um, you know, going back to Dominique Johnson, that was uh that was something that Sam Pittman didn't want to talk about on, on Saturday after the win, and now that we know why, it, it makes a little more sense. It's unfortunate for Dominique Johnson. Um, you have to think that it I don't know if it was bothering him or not. Pittman told us a few times that he was 100%. Um, we know that he tore it, basically. It was non-contact, cut it on air, or cut on air is what Pittman said. Basically, he was making a cut, and then it just tore, and that's what happened. Um, it's unfortunate for Dominique Johnson. You know, he was he was one of your top running backs last year alongside Rocket Sanders, and so um, you're lucky that you have a guy like Rocket who's having a year like he's having, but – you know, you never want anything like this to happen. Same with Cade Renfro. You know, a talented quarterback, had a scholarship at Ole Miss. Don't know if he would ever play this year for Arkansas, but you never want that to happen to anybody. So um, <clears throat> those two things, very unfortunate. And so the good thing is, and this, I don't – at least it wasn't in the secondary. Like, you can't afford to have any more injuries in the secondary. Um, but, of course, as I said, you don't want that to happen to anybody. Let's talk about the secondary, Quincy McAdoo. So we heard from Sam Pittman on Monday, and this was kind of out of the blue for most of us. We were all kind of like, oh, okay. Uh, he said, like, it's time for Quincy McAdoo to start pushing to start at cornerback. He said Malik Chavis is back. Uh, he, he should be back from his concussion. He got a concussion against BYU, and then it just didn't heal up enough over the bye week and time for the Auburn game, so he didn't travel to Auburn. And Pittman basically said, like, yeah, he's he should be back, but he's going to be competing with Quincy McAdoo. And at the, the in the two days that, that we've been to practice, on Monday during scouts and on Tuesday during fastball, Quincy McAdoo has been the first team quarterback. So pretty interesting, Robert. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it it was funny because the the first wide receiver to switch to defensive back was Sam Bakke, and yet. Here they are saying Quincy McAdoo is the guy that that they want to to get some reps, right? Um, interesting that the order worked out the way it did, but I I do remember, um, you know, before the bye week, Pittman mentioned like we we moved both of them over there for a reason. I I believe, you know, how he says I believe, right? I believe both of them need to get out there after the bye week, so. Um, sounds like he's got plans in motion for uh, for one of them to to do so. But, you know, everything he says, you got to take with a grain of salt. So at the same time, I will believe it when I see it. Yeah, I don't it's it's hard to tell because you don't you don't really know if this is just like a smoke screen and they're just doing this just to mess with Liberty or if it's actually going to happen. And 
either way, from what we've heard from Sam Pittman, is that Quincy McAdoo is a natural over at corner. He played some defensive back in high school. And so it, it seems like they like what he can do over there. And, uh, I mean, he was a four-star receiver, so he's a great athlete. And you'd like to see what he can do in a game because, you know, we heard that Cade Fortin was really good in practice and it didn't translate to the game. So, and that's, that's the case with a lot of guys that can be really good in practice and they're not gamers. So <clears throat> Liberty might provide you with a chance to get Quincy McAdoo out there, or maybe they don't even say, well, Hey, we're up by however many points. Let's throw Quincy out there. Maybe they just start him, you know, like that could happen as well. That would be interesting, <clears throat> but that's something to look at. Now, a lot of, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a few midseason uh, award honors like at watch list have come out. And last year, Grant Morgan from Arkansas won the Burlesworth Award. This year, Hudson Clark, he's up for it. Now, this is an award that every team gets, you know, a, a player um, listed. But you have to think Hudson Clark, you know, he's been starting basically all year. He's had a good year. Arkansas could go back to back. I don't know what the other walk ons look like. Maybe Stetson Bennett gets nominated again. Now, let me ask you this. Is is the the Burlesworth trophy, is that just like for what they've done this year or is it what they've done their whole career? Uh it's it's their career is is what my understanding is. See, I would I would think that that works in favor of Hudson Clark because of the 2020 he had, right? With all those interceptions. All the interceptions in the one game. In the one game, yeah. Yeah, so that's but, not but really still, a career. That's a game, though. I mean, it's it's three more interceptions that he doesn't have this year. I don't know if the award, if you can be nominated twice. I feel like Grant Morgan was nominated. Morgan was. In a row. Okay, so you would think Stetson Bennett would probably be a finalist again. And having a national title under his belt certainly helps him. Yeah, yeah, so that's... That's uh that's one thing that you have to think about. Okay, uh Drew Sanders. Let's see, Drew Sanders. What award? Okay, here we go. Bednarik. Uh Butt Kiss Award. He was selected as a semifinalist for that, which is the nation's best collegiate linebacker. And then also the Bednarik Award, as you mentioned, it is presented to the most outstanding defensive player. In college football, so only twenty semifinalists for the Bednarik Award, and then fifteen for the Butkus Award. So pretty elite company there for Drew Sanders. We know that his, the 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 start to his season was incredible. He's kind of dropped off. I don't think he's had a sack since the Alabama game, but that's because opponents have been keying in on him. And you got to think, you know, from now until the end of the year, he'll probably have a couple more sacks. Yeah, you do. Um, I mean, if if they take they take Drew Sanders away, that simply opens more lanes for for other guys to get involved. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I don't really worry about maybe Drew Sanders drop off in production, but you know he he'll be back, right? I mean, you got a non conference team in Liberty coming up. Um, you know, no offense to them, they just don't play in the SEC, and then Missouri at the end of the, at the end of the year. So you know that's that's two prime games in particular that that he should have plenty of chances to to wreak some havoc in the backfield. Okay, a few more things as far as just news pieces. So Terry Hampton moved to starting defensive tackle, and then Eric Gregory shifted out to defensive end, starting defensive end. That is, this is on the depth on the depth chart. Uh, Zach Williams moved down to second team, and he shares an OR with Jordan Dominic, uh, Miles Slusher. First team nickel, there was an or between him and Jaden Johnson. I don't think there was ever a confusion of who would start, though. And then there, there's now an or between Malik Chavez and Hudson Clark at corner. I don't really get that because they're going to play Clark at safety for the most part, so I don't know why they keep doing that, but it's whatever. Um, so those were the few things on the depth chart. And then LSU game time is going to be an 11 a.m. kick. Sam Pittman said he was a little disappointed in that because it kind of puts them at a disadvantage recruiting-wise. Uh, LSU, who checked in at number 10 in the initial college football playoff rankings. That was a little surprising. It it was very surprising, honestly. Um, you know, going back to the 11 a.m. kick, it's sort of like whatever, because uh, you think about it, there have been 
no shortage of 11 a.m. road kicks. So maybe it's just uh, sort of evening itself out, you know, in a way. Yeah. So that is uh, – it's unfortunate. You know, the fans hate it. The fans hate the 11 a.m. kicks, especially a game like LSU. You you want that to be, you know, a night game maybe or at least a 3 o'clock. Give them some time to tailgate, some time to travel up, all that different stuff. That way you're not having to pay for a hotel room in Fayetteville, which is – I mean, the prices are outrageous during a, a Saturday where there's a game in town. I saw a tweet. I forget who it was from, but it was like, if you ever want to feel worthless, just remember that there are lights at Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Yeah, I saw that. That was funny. Um, Let's see. Last bit of news that we can get to on this episode. Brian Harson out at Auburn, Arkansas. Got Brian Harson fired. You had your little stat about how Chad Morris coached one more game than Brian Harson. Yeah, I thought that was particularly impressive. I mean, that was the first thing that came to my mind because I knew it was Harson's second season. And, uh, you know, that's about about a little over halfway through is how long it took Morris to get canned. Um, the, the one difference was that I, I guess the standards in the program, I mean, Harson won nine of those 21 games. Morris only won four. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Auburn – Auburn causing a lot of news on on the head coaching front and uh, uh, Arkansas business. Shout out to them for breaking a story about uh, Auburn offering Hunter Yurichek two million dollars to to uh, become their athletic director and then a new contract at the U of A. Yeah, that's one of those situations where it it makes sense to go after a guy like Yurichek. But if you are a guy like Yurichek, why would you leave the situation that you're at and that you've built up at Arkansas? Seems like he loves it here in Fayetteville. <clears throat> I'm not Hunter Yurchek, but I mean, like you can tell that he's embraced the the University of Arkansas, and you don't always get that from an athletic director or a coach. So, um, it's right. great I mean, that I they don't... kept Hunter Yurchek. Like that is a huge, huge thing to keep a guy like Hunter Yurchek. Because think of the hires he's made. I mean, he's made incredible hires. Absolutely, and you know, you're, you're talking about. Seems like the seems like the athletic director totally loves the school, right? I don't know what the vibes at Mississippi State are, but what does it say that that Auburn was was able to hire the Mississippi State's guy away from what I read was his alma mater to to go work to go work on the planes? I mean, you know, maybe there are more resources there, standards are higher, the potential is greater, but um, what what does that say about Arkansas and Mississippi State, right? Yeah, I I'd have to look more into that. I would have my my initial reaction is money, but also some someone's gonna listen to me and be like, "Well, Mississippi State has more money than Auburn, or something like that." So, I mean, I would think Auburn has more money than Arkansas too. Possibly, I don't know though. The whole money thing, I I have no clue who has the most money. I mean, Texas or Texas A and M, like one of those two teams has the most money. That's that's for dang dang sure. Right. Um. Last thing, coaches that might go to Auburn. We've heard some names thrown out. Uh, Hugh Freeze just signed a, a new contract with Liberty, so you would think that that's out of out of the picture. Deion Sanders has been mentioned. Lane Kiffin has been mentioned a lot. I don't know why Lane Kiffin would leave what he has at Ole Miss to go to Auburn, but you have to think the recruiting potential uh, is better at Auburn. You know you can win a national title at Auburn because it's been done like twice in the past decade or something like that. At Ole Miss, I don't know. I, I has he reached the ceiling that he can get at Ole Miss? You know, I mean, you just mentioned the reasons he would go to Auburn. Um, I I think their last title was what twenty ten, maybe with Cam Newton. Um, but but I I get your point. Um, that 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 would be why that would be why Kiffin leaves Ole Miss to go to Auburn, and I do think that would be the funniest possible outcome too if Auburn's able to hire Mississippi State's athletic director away and Mississippi's football coach away um, an ultimate F you to the state of Mississippi there. Um, you mentioned Hugh freeze being out of the running. I don't, I don't know that he is. I think that that extension he just signed with Liberty was really just an insurance policy on, on Liberty's part. Um, you know, it, Auburn, if, if it wanted to could pay the buyout. At, at Liberty. And that would be so dumb, though, because they just bought out their past two coaches, and then they're going to pay a buyout for Hugh Freeze just to probably pay another buyout for him when he doesn't get the job done, you know? 
Right. It it would be silly. Um, but you know, maybe that's maybe that's one of the guys they want. I don't know. All right, we're talking too much Auburn football on the Gridiron Hogs podcast. So uh, on Friday, we'll have our Bet Saracen episode where we break down the lines, odds, player props, and more, and we'll give our hog beat picks for Arkansas versus Liberty on Friday on the Gridiron Hogs podcast.